Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at a very important building block in the analogue circuit world and that is the operational amplifier and it has lots and lots of uses it's a very ubiquitous bit of circuitry and you'll see it cropping up all over uh, analogue circuitry and, and some digital too. So let's start as we do with these videos by looking at the theory and then we're going to expand that to actually make a practical use of an op amp. Operational amplifiers then, more usually known as uh, op amps, are devices with very high gain, uh, circa 10 to the 5 times. They've got two inputs, inverting uh, marked with a minus and non-inverting marked with a plus. Just bear in mind when you're looking at these things in circuit diagrams that the plus isn't always at the top. Uh, it can be uh, either way up, so just bear that in mind so you don't get yourself uh, too confused. And the difference between the inputs is uh, is the amplified output. The very high gain can require additional circuitry for stability, and certainly in the example I'm going to show you I've actually uh, included some additional circuitry for that. One of my textbooks refers to it as uh, as the high gain requires taming, so that you can control the output. Looking at the op amp then in an actual circuit, here we've got uh, the non-inverting input connected to R1 and R2 that form a, a voltage divider. In the case of uh, this circuit, they're 4.7k, so the voltage at test point 1 should be half of the supply voltage, so we'll have a look at that. A VR1, I've used a 10k uh, trimmer pot, and again test point 2 should show the voltage um, on the wiper of that potentiometer. So that will allow us to um, keep w the non-inverting input steady and vary the voltage on the inverting input and then we can observe the uh, product of all that on test point 3 which is the output. Now I mentioned uh, sometimes you need additional, additional circuitry and uh, in this example I want to actually use this circuit for a uh, practical example that, um, a little bit later on in the video. So I'm going to include a third resistor, R3. Now R3 in this case is 1 mega ohm, so bear in mind R1 and R2 are 4.7k, so it's um, it's a very high resistance and what, what that does is provide positive feedback to the non-inverting input and that has um, uh, not only does it have the effect of stabilising it, but it also has the effect of, for want of a better word, um, sharpening up the, the change in state. And again, we'll look at that both on the multimeter and we'll also try and view that um, uh, as, a, as a graph as well. Right, let's start by looking at that circuit on the breadboard. One or two of my viewers have asked uh, if I could do a bit more of a, a close-up of the breadboard so I'm going to do that before I actually start as I need you to be able to see the, the meters. So there's actually three versions of the circuit on this board um, we'll come back to the other two in a moment. The chip here is actually four op amps in a, a single 14 pin package and that's an FET for a, a later um, part of the video. Uh, what we're concerned with however now are on the non-inverting input we've got a voltage divider with these two 4k7 resistors here and this trim pot here is providing the voltage for the inverting input and the output is off uh, a pin 2 just here so I've got a meter attached to the output and I've also got uh, another meter here that I'm going to take some various other readings with. So I'll just reposition the camera and we'll have a look uh, how that circuit performs. Okay, um, it's proving a little difficult to get both the uh, breadboard and the two meters in view, so we won't worry too much about that. So the unity meter then is attached to the output of the op amp and currently is reading essentially zero volts. The bench meter I'm going to use to make various measurements. Currently it's attached to the positive supply rail we can see we've got a supply voltage of just over um, 12 volts and first uh, test point we're going to do is test point one from the previous slide which is the voltage divider between the two 4k7 resistors and not surprisingly we're getting about six volts so that's six volts on the non-inverting input of the op amp now I'm going to move to the inverting input 
and currently I've got that fed from the 10k potentiometer you may recall uh, and it's about um, 40 millivolts or so above the voltage on the non-inverting input so I'm going to start reducing that voltage now and look out for the effect uh, on the output so as we approach there we go I'm now what maybe 30 40 ish millivolts less than I was before suddenly we've got five nearly five and a half volts on the output so you remember re may recall I said from the first slide that uh, the amplification is the difference between the two and the dif difference between the two is about half the supply voltage which is why you're getting something um, approximating to about six volts so if I continue to reduce the voltage doesn't matter how low we go in fact we can go right down to zero volts there uh, we've still got 5.4 volts on the on the output so if I advance the voltage again and let's come up to if I can do it carefully here 5.9 we've still got 5.4 on the output and as I cross 6 volts there it's now suddenly flipped back to um, to, to zero in other words it's sort of turned itself off if it was a digital circuit and I can advance the voltage as high as I want I can take it right up to um, positive supply rail voltage there very nearly and still um, no change to the op amp so the thing to note there is that how abrupt the change is it is very abrupt in fact it's to be honest too abrupt to see properly on a on a multimeter so I'll just cross that point again and there we go on she comes increase that voltage on the non -in on the inverting input and turns off very quickly now I mentioned the uh, one mega ohm resistor which is acting as positive feedback and is fed into the junction between the the two voltage divider resistors so I'm going to go back to the voltage divider voltage there so that is the uh, voltage on the non-inverting input at the moment with the output off and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce the voltage uh, on the inverting input again and turn it on and there you are she's turned on and as you can see the volt as I turn it on and then re advance the voltage to turn it off so we go from 6 volts on the voltage divider to about 12 millivolts more um, when she's switched on so that's off this is on so that's the effect of that positive feedback it's actually causing the the reference voltage if you like that's on the non-inverting input um, to to be more emphatic it flicks it over now that's way too quick to see on multimeters so let's reconfigure it and have a look at that on the oscilloscope using a ramp voltage instead of the potentiometer I've reconfigured the circuit now so uh, we've got the signal generator producing a, a ramp waveform at about 20 Hertz and I've got it coming um, up from zero volts rather than crossing the line as it's a it's a DC uh, it's a positive DC ramp that I want and I'm applying that um, that this ramp waveform to the inverting input instead of using the potentiometer in the previous example so we've got voltage rising reaching a peak dropping back down um, now I've paused that so you can see it because I've actually got the scope triggering triggering off channel one um, so this is the waveform actually running I'm going to turn channel one on which will cure the uh, drifting about and this is the output of the op amp um, and you can see we've got a very good approximation of a, a square wave so if I just change the time base slightly um, can't see it terribly well but um, pressing the wrong button there as you can see the rise time is extremely fast so on the meter we saw that change that very abrupt change in about 100 millivolts um, you can see that it's not the kind of voltage you could even observe on a meter this is um, where oscilloscopes come into their own so we've got a very abrupt change as the voltage crosses that point there it stays on and it remains on until it very abruptly goes off 
Now, that behaviour is uh, the kind of behaviour you'd see in a Schmidt trigger, and actually, um, in a way, this is a Schmidt trigger, um, which is uh, something which switches on and remains on, it doesn't uh, jump between the two states. And that effect um, is influenced largely by that one mega ohm uh, positive feedback resistor between the output and the non inverting input. But as you can see, a very abrupt change in channel uh, in channel one there which is the output of the op amp uh, when we're feeding it with the, the DC um, voltage as a ramp on the inverting input. As a refresher that's the circuit we've just been looking at for those two examples on the breadboard. I want to now include those um, elements of the circuit in a practical example so let's move on to that. A very similar set up we've still got the same potential divider onto the non-inverting input with the positive feedback from the output that's identical instead of a potentiometer on the inverting input we've now got uh, a light dependent resistor at the top and a 10k potentiometer at the bottom which will allow me to uh, control the, the sensitivity um, if you like how the uh, how the voltage it, uh, between those two components responds to the variation in light level now the light dependent resistor, um, if you point it at the, the daylight coming in through the window, it's about 500 ohms approximately. And if I then cover it up so it's uh, almost dark, it certainly goes up well above 12, 13k, something like that. So there's quite a quite a swing in, in resistance there from dark to light. Uh, so the uh, comparison process that's going on between the two inputs is identical to the example we've just seen. The output however now is connected to the gate of an n-channel MOSFET and uh, I've included between the drain and the source of that MOSFET I've included a, uh, an LED and a current limiting resistor and I've just done that uh, so you can see a visual example of the effect However, I've, I've picked a MOSFET because um, of its ability to handle a little bit uh, higher current and it would be, for instance, um, quite common to see a, a relay uh, in that circuit instead of an LED which could then switch uh, a considerably higher voltage or current. So let's uh, go and have a look on the breadboard, how that circuit looks and what it does. Here we are back looking at the breadboard again for a practical uh, demonstration of how to use uh, an op amp. So here we've got the, um, the quad app amp, I'm just using one of them. Uh, here is the voltage dividers, the uh, 1 mega ohm resistor happens to be uh, one of those two there, um, which provides the positive feedback. And this time I've got um, a light dependent resistor here, uh, pointing at the window, and it's a reasonably nice day in uh, North Yorkshire and this is the 10k pot which uh, forms the other half of the voltage divider uh, resistive network um, which effectively is just the, the sensitivity if you like. Uh, the output of the op amp goes directly to the gate of this uh, n-channel MOSFET and then we've got a, an LED and a current limiting resistor there just to, um, to prevent uh, the LED uh, getting excited and blowing itself up um, so hopefully it won't. So how does this circuit work? Well actually it is currently working. Um, this is the kind of circuit you might find let's say in an automatic uh, lighting system whereby when it is light um, there's no uh, lighting needs to be on, no additional lighting or artificial lighting. Um, so as we uh, darken the light source being supplied to the LED, we should see the LED come on, take it away and it switches off and of course we can still see that very abrupt effect, it's either on or it's off. Um, so that's a, a practical example and this resistor here, um, I can actually adjust that so that let that's on now even in daylight so I'm just going to adjust that so it just turns off there and now you can see it's much more sensitive I just have to move my hand sort of put the LDR in shadow and straight away the um, light source is triggered uh, whereas I can um, reduce it 
say to about there where if I put that kind of shadow over doesn't trigger I have to get quite a lot closer and there we go so that's a, a practical application of an op amp and I hope that's made a bit of sense okay well hopefully that's been useful and uh, it's got you thinking about uses for op amps it's an incredibly uh, complicated subject um, they've been around quite a long time they were even uh, uh, vacuum tube or valve op amps um, back in I think it was the 50s um, so as a circuit building block they, they've been very significant for a very long time uh, and there's lots of really good websites uh, not surprisingly which can give you lots of theory uh, quite a lot of them that I've seen are, are very heavy on uh, on the mathematics and calculating things um, I've tried here to stick to some practical examples but I would encourage you to have a look at those websites um, and I'm sure there's um, plenty more than ones that I've found I'll put some links um, down below in the in the description um, to some of the websites that uh, I've found useful um, and hopefully encourage you to do a little bit of um, exploring for yourself um, hope the video has been useful if it has please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down either way be absolutely great if you could subscribe if you haven't already that would help me and we look forward to seeing you on the next video